let's say that you're recording a bunch of people and you've got limited cameras. You've got like a wide shot. So like just for a second, just pretend that these are real people. Okay. So you're at an event, maybe something corporate or a place of worship or like a musical performance. And you really only have one wide shot, but you want to be able to switch scenes to kind of zoom in on different people or even take each individual person and highlight them in a way like this or maybe like this or whatever you want to be able to take those that one wide shot and turn into a bunch of little shots you can do that and it's so cool and i used to do this in a, in a roundabout kind of way in the wrong way and i didn't even realize until semi recently that you can use ecams camera switchers uh function to be able to do this so i'm going to kind of walk you through this but if you're if you're new to ecam my goodness, there's just so much that you can customize if you're doing any type of live production or any live to tape production where you don't want to fix everything in post. So just check out Ecamm because Ecamm is going to solve all your problems. All right. So let me let me go into this tutorial and show you what I'm doing. So we're going to be talking about using the camera switcher to take one source and duplicate it and then control those sources as independent video inputs. So you're going to want to make sure that you can see your camera switcher. You can either hover over this main screen and tap on these four squares here, uh, rectangles, four rectangles, you know what I'm saying, or go up to window and then select uh, camera switcher. So here's my camera switcher. Now there's two different options here. You've got all sources. So if you click on this, you're going to see that I've got one, two, three, four, five, and a guest. So I've got, I've got some different cameras plugged in. All sources will show you what is physically plugged in, readable by Ecamm um, into your computer. But if you go to AB, you can actually define what you want some of these camera inputs to be. So what I've done here is I have added a bunch of camera placeholders. So you can see I've got camera A, B, C, D, all the way up to M. And I did test this. You can add, I'm not going to say infinite because you don't want your 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 like computer to blow up, but you can add a lot. So even more than just the alphabet. So I literally went through the whole alphabet and then added some more and it went from Z to symbols to keyboard uh, symbols on your on your keyboard. So in this particular case, I added one camera placeholder for each little Lego guy. Huh? Your Ecamm setup might be a little bit different than mine, but if you are in the camera switcher and you click on A, B, go down to the bottom left and you're gonna see this plus symbol. You can add a placeholder from here. So I'm gonna do that right now. And then you're gonna see that it added camera N. And now I can tell this camera what to be. I can say I want it to be um, this camera that I have, this capture card, or I want it to be my MacBook Pro camera, or I want it to be a placeholder for anyone that I bring in through Zoom. But what I did for all of these is I selected the exact same camera, this Obspot Meet 2 stream camera. So it looks a little crazy, right? You've got all of these cameras that look the same. Why does this one have? Oh, I had green screen affected on it. But you've got all of these cameras that are the same input. But the cool thing that you can do is you can define each of these to zoom in. And there are a couple effects that you can add to it. All right. So if you look at this scene right here, you've got a picture in picture setup. You've got the base of the scene is this camera, which I've set to be camera B. And then in the overlays panel, you've got camera A, which is my camera plugged in right here. This next scene I've set as another camera scene and it's just camera B. That's what's set up here. If I were to switch on here, I could set it to be me. But for now, I have it be set to camera B. And if I wanted to do an effect on here, like let's say that I wanted to mirror this image, I can set that right over here or I can set it to black and white, but I can also set this to zoom. And if I set this to zoom wherever I want, let's say here, then camera B, if I switch to it, is going to be set in like that. Camera C, camera B. Okay, so this is one way that you can that you can use this. But the cooler way that I thought to use it is if you want to set up a scene where you have, okay, so if you want to set up a scene where you have all of these cameras individually living as overlays, you can totally do that. So let's talk about this scene right here. I've got in the background, I've got this green backdrop, and then I have added each one of these cameras from C to M up as an overlay. And what I wanted to do was have this scene be a close up of each individual person, Lego guy. So I 
created a camera placeholder for each of these and it's all feeding from the same camera right here okay it's all coming from the same camera but each camera placeholder i have zoomed in so camera c which is this guy in the top left corner I set it to zoom and pan and then I kind of cropped out the side and you can crop by holding the option button on your keyboard and dragging and dropping the sides. So by using both the zoom and option crop, I've been able to pull out each individual person. So this guy right here, okay, camera N, you can see if I either select it from the top camera effects, select camera M, I zoomed in here and if it was a little off, I could move it around. And as I'm doing this, it's not affecting every other camera. It's just affecting that one little guy because it is now, Ecamm is now seeing this as its own camera. So what I did in this scene is that I've got a blank scene, I've got my backdrop, and then I wanted to have five, originally four, but five of these Lego guys kind of featured and bigger taking up more of the screen. What was cool is that instead of just saying um, camera F or whatever, so this used to be camera F, it's still camera F in my camera switcher, but I can rename this to have it be who I want so that I'm not getting confused. So I called this guy Band-Aid guy, fighter guy, helmet guy, spaceship guy, firefighter guy. So this over here, renaming your overlays can kind of help you stay organized. Uh, but yeah, now I can move these around. And if again, if I wanted to do some effects, not all effects, but a lot of our effects, I could do that. I can switch it to black and white. I could blur somebody out. So there's all these different features that you can do. The most important one for this use case is the ability to zoom in and out. Here's another example that might give you some ideas. In this scene, I've got myself, camera A, which I've renamed here to be Jill. And then I've got camera C over here. So camera C. And in this particular scene, I have it zoomed in all the way on the right side. And if I switch to this next scene, I basically duplicated the scene, but I moved the I moved the zoom over to the left. So if I go back and forth here, I've, I'm talking to this side, and I'm talking to this side. So it's giving you motion, maybe it's too much motion, but it's giving you motion with one camera in two different scenes and I can just go back and forth as people are talking. Before I started using the camera switcher, this is what I used to do. You can see in this scene, I've got camera A, let's rename this to Jill. And then you can see here, I've got camera D. And camera D has been duplicated, okay? So if I if I decide to crop these, I can certainly crop these and that's not gonna change anything. So if I hold the option key, I can like crop in this shot a little bit, you know, however I want. Or I could even say, let's just look at these guys over here and then these guys over here. But look what happens because they're both camera D. If I decide to zoom in, let's say I just want to zoom in on this one, what's gonna happen? It's gonna affect both of them. So this is why you wouldn't want to copy the same exact camera, but you'd want to use a camera placeholder. Guys, this just totally blew my mind. There are so many different ways that you can use Ecamm and this one feature alone Taking one camera and make it into like so many cameras is just so cool and can save you a ton of money if you don't have the budget to be able to get all these PTZ cameras and multiple angles. Just think about what you want to create and I guarantee there's a way to create it with this software. Go Ecamm, Ecamm's the best. All right, let us know if we can do anything or if we can create any tutorials for you or help you out in any way. All right, bye, have a great day, see ya.